Okay, just one caveat. The topic is called Project Management Lessons Learned from the Movies. And I just want to warn you that after seeing this presentation, you're not going to look at movies the same way again. You'll be always looking for the Project Management Lessons that you can gain from each of the movies. So let me jump right in. You're probably familiar with this uh, chart here. It comes from uh, the latest edition of uh, PMI's Pinbox Guide, and it shows all the processes that they've identified. With every edition, the number of processes goes up or down. It's currently at 47. So you can see they've organized these processes according to the process groups and the knowledge areas. So it's all very nice, but it's not very useful uh, it's like looking at a dictionary, you know, what you do with this. So what I've done with it is for my training, I've converted all the processes into this step-by-step -step chart. So we'll be using this chart as we go through the various lessons learned uh, to show the context of where each of the lessons that we talk about, where they fit into the step-by-step uh, -step process of doing a typical project. This is what I would say is a typical medium size uh, IT type project. These are the steps that I would see. So let's uh, talk about our first movie. Our first movie is uh, Groundhog Day. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. It concerns uh, Bill Murray who plays the part of a uh, uh, weather forecaster and uh, Andy McDowell plays the part of the producer and is also a cameraman as the three principal characters. And Bill Murray wakes up on Groundhog Day, and he's a bit cynical, he's a bit jaded, he's done all this before, and he's covering uh, the Groundhog uh, celebration to see if the Groundhog sees its shadow, and there's uh, six more months of winter, whatever it is. And as I say, he's a bit cynical and jaded, so he passes through the day, not, uh, not a very happy person. The next day he wakes up, and wakes up to the alarm, and it's the same uh, announcer on the radio, the same songs are playing, the same talk and he's discovering that he's repeating the day. Well, while everyone else around him, of course, is it's just another day for them, he's repeating the day. And of course, this goes on for many, many days. And at first, he's totally frustrated by it, but over time, he starts to realize that he can use this to his advantage. For example, he takes the shine to Andy McDowell, there, the producer, and he discovers that she likes uh, French poetry, so he learns some French poetry and impresses her with his knowledge of French poetry. She likes the piano, so he teaches, he learns the piano, and over time he gets better and better at it, and of course he impresses her with that. Um, there are people choking in restaurants, and he starts to, you know, he, he knows that this is going to happen, so he's able to save the person choking. A little child falls out of a tree, and he's able to save the child and becomes a town hero. So as you can see, the lesson learned from this movie, I think quite clearly, is that the value of lessons learned to achieve continuous improvement. There's a lot of things that happen time after time after time on our projects, and if we really pay attention to them, if we really do something about them, we can help ourselves enormously uh, going forward. So let me, let me point out here that the typical place where uh, lessons are collected is at the end of the project. So we're talking the closing stage. You know, pretty well most people uh, collect lessons learned. So let me ask you, are lessons learned collected on your projects and actions taken as a result? So maybe you collect the lessons, but you don't usually act on them. Maybe you do collect them, but they've uh, not often acted upon, and maybe they're not collected at all. And uh, what I have found from doing this many, many times, uh, asking these questions, is that about half the people are collecting lessons and half are not. But the half that are collecting, almost all of them say that while they're collecting them, not much happens with them. Maybe they use them themselves, but no one else in their organization seems to use them. So I think that's the biggest mistake that can be made, that they're actually collected, but nothing happens with them. So take it upon yourselves, number one, if you, you know, to the extent you can influence everything, certainly to share the lessons that you collect, encourage other project managers to share them with you. And what happened in the organization I worked in, I worked in an organization called Proxicom in New York, and I was the managing director there, 
And one of the vice presidents had a great idea. He says, why don't we have a senior director go out and talk to all the project managers, collect all their lessons learned, and present them to the executive. And that wasn't a very hard task, and it had an amazing effect because what was happening was all these lessons were basically just sitting there, but by actually someone synthesizing them, presenting them back, there were some very, very simple things that uh, were able to be fixed that, you know, maybe everyone was complaining about, but no one was paying much attention to. So periodically, I'd say at least once a year, find some way of going out and collecting all the lessons from all the various project managers, synthesizing them, summarizing them, and presenting them back to management. And I think you'll find just that very act alone will make some very significant benefits to your organization. So in terms of the... Uh, lessons learned, it's really a, a continuous improvement process. And if you look at the capability maturity model, this is something that Carnegie Mellon uh, has come up with, uh, I think, in the late 1980s they came, came up with it, and they evolved it in around the early 2000s into a capability mo maturity model integration uh, process. You can see that they've established five uh, steps. In the first step, everything is ad hoc, everything is chaotic. Then you start to come up with some processes, you start to define it, you start to put some metrics in it, and then in the final evolution, you're continuously improving how you are doing these things. You are getting feedback, you are getting uh, ways that you can improve your processes, and then you're continuously improving that. So I think this is really the lesson. It's really one of continuous improvement. PMI have a organizational project management maturity model, what they call the OPM3, and they essentially use the same kind of model. Instead of having five levels, they've simplified it down to four. They assume that most people in this day and age are not at the chaotic level with zero processes. So they've said the first level is you should standardize. In the next level, you're putting in measures. In the third level, you're controlling, and again, in the final level, it's a continuous improvement. So again, they're following the same kind of model of aiming for continuous improvement. But they've also added another couple of dimensions to it, as well as looking at it from a project management perspective. Their model is looking at it from a program management and portfolio management uh, levels as well. So they evolve the model into those dimensions. Okay, the lessons learned process. I'm not going to go into all these processes in a lot of detail. I think you can glance at them and you know, get a good idea of what it's all about. But basically, in a lessons learned process, you want to cover what worked well. You want to reinforce the things that have been done well, and it's a good way to start with that. But you also then are going to focus on what could be done better, and you're going to ask questions of you know, various aspects of your project as to how did we do, how could we improve. That's really the goal. The goal is not to find uh, scapegoats not to find fault with everything. It's more to say, if we were to do this again, how could we do it better? How could we do it faster? How could we do it cheaper? How could we be more successful? And the point is, it's while we talked about it being done uh, at the end of the project, it really should be an ongoing process. You should be collecting it throughout the project. And in fact, there are times when you learn a lesson early on the project that you don't have to wait for your next project to apply that lesson. You can apply it right there and then on your project. So keep attention to uh, collecting these lessons as you go through the project. And at the end of every project, and if it's a large project, you probably want to do this at the end of every phase of that project, you are going to do a formal lesson learned. So that's where the one at the closing comes up. It's formal. You have an agenda. Ideally, you should have an outside facilitator. doesn't necessarily have to be a consultant. You can be someone from another part of the organization that is good at facilitation. And you really want personal issues uh, not to be